Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 19th of November 2011. In the last week we've had over 50 flares, yet that level of activity is considered low to moderate. We've come a long way in the last six months. We're going to review the week in general and then look at specifically what's going on in the Sun in the last 24 hours. But first, a trivia question. Can you work out what this riddle means? On this date, the Sun God's Dozen set two in the midst of stormy waters to become three and four. The answer will be given at the end. So let's start by looking over this very busy week. We haven't had any really major flares this week. However, we've had a lot of eruptions and associated coronal mass ejections. The week started off relatively quiet with just a few C flares. Then by day three, we had a series of three M flares, followed by a whole series of medium to small C flares. But towards the end of this week, the um, activity has quieted down quite a bit. All in all, we have had 47 C flares in the week and three M flares distributed as shown in this plot. We've had no X flares. To find out why, let's take a look at the uh, magnetic and uh, sunspot evolution over the last week. I suggest you watch both of these movies in full screen mode. Starting with the sunspot images from the HMI instrument on SDO, we can follow the individual sunspot regions and their evolution throughout this period. The interesting thing here is to watch the size and the number of sunspots change slowly over time. However, you can see in the magnetic movie how some of the sunspots seem to have flows and motions associated with them, and those are the ones that are generally active, while other spots just sit there and don't change very much, and those, although they're stable, do not produce very many flares. You may want to repeat this movie several times, looking at the individual regions as they cross the disk. Next let's take a look at the transition region and coronal evolution, starting with the SDO AIA channel, Helium-2304, at about 50,000 degrees. This channel is particularly useful for looking for uh, ejecta and seeing the origins of coronal mass ejections. See how many you can see in this one week sequence. Now some of these are associated with the C flares, some of them are associated with the coronal mass ejections, and some are associated with both. Next let's turn to the Iron 9 uh, channel from the AIA instrument, that's at about 650,000 degrees. And this channel is particularly useful for looking at interconnections between regions. You can see large magnetic loops stretching from one region to another and over the limb. These are very important for cancellation of magnetic flux, which is a driver for the solar cycle. Next we turn to the Iron 20 line, which is formed at about 10 million degrees. So every flash you see in this movie is in fact a flare. Count them and see if you can get to 50. Note which regions are producing the most flares. Are they the ones that correspond to the most dynamic magnetic features you saw in the earlier movies? I think for the most part you find that they will correspond. So this gives us a diagnostic to try to predict flares. It's not 100% reliable, but it's a good indicator. Next let's see if all these surges and flares have led to any coronal mass ejections. So we'll turn to the LASCO instrument on SOHO and combine the C2 and C3 images to show the week's evolution of coronal mass ejections. You can easily see we've had some spectacular events, some of which look as though they're halo coronal mass ejections and so could be heading straight for the Earth. So let's see if geospace was affected by any of these coronal mass ejections. It seems not. This is a plot of the KP index, which is a measure of how much the Earth's magnetic field is being rattled by the solar wind, and has been relatively quiet for the whole week. The images above it are pictures of the auroral zone, and they tell a similar story. Now let's focus in on more recent activity. At the moment we have nine officially numbered regions on the disk, but I counted at least five more as yet unnumbered regions, so the Sun is getting very busy at the moment. We'll start with region 1343 in the northwest. This region is about to go over the west limb, so will not be affecting us very much anymore, although in the last 48 hours it did produce one C flare. The top left hand corner I have the evolution of the sunspot area. I'm rather suspicious of these numbers. As the region came over the east limb, it started to grow, its area peaked towards sun center, and then it started to decay away again. This is the classic signature of foreshortening and I think it's not properly being taken into account when producing these numbers. Next we turn to regions 1346 and 1351 in the southwest. I'm not very convinced that these are in fact two separate regions and if you look at the magnetogram you will see that these really are just one single region in region 1346. 
Region 1346 has produced two sea flares in the last 48 hours. Let's compare the emissions in uh, the low corona with the uh, magnetic fields. In fact, I can actually overlay one with the other here using the Helio Viewer software. And you can see how this region is interconnected. Let's take a look at a movie of the region in the low corona taken over the last 24 hours. Look at all the intricate interconnections of the region and how they change with time. It is a scientific miracle that some people can understand actually how these regions work, given all these very complicated interconnections. Next we move to region 1350 in the northeast. It has shown considerable signs of decay and in fact while I've been producing this video it has decayed yet more. However if you look at the bottom of the frame you can see one of the unnumbered regions that I was talking about earlier and that has continued to grow over the last 24 hours. Next we move to region 1352 in the southeast. It's one of the larger regions on the disk at the moment. However it's not produced any flares. There's another one of these isolated large spots that have very few if any uh, trader spots associated with it. These tend to be rather stable. Next we move to regions 1353 and 1355 in the northeast. These two are relatively large regions. They have recently appeared and so we have very little history on them. However they have produced one and two sea flares respectively. Also interestingly you can see there is a region out ahead of region 1353 that has uh, appeared. That probably will be numbered uh, as a new region fairly soon, as will the one that's just coming over the northeast limb uh, to the left of this picture. I notice while putting this together that there's yet a third unnumbered region to the north of these two that hasn't been included as yet. This is obviously an area worth keeping an eye on. Last but by no means least we go to region 1354 in the southeast. This is by far the largest region on the disk at the moment and has a very complex structure so is a good candidate for producing yet more flares. I've already discussed several of the unnumbered regions. The remaining one is the one in the northwest. And I don't think this was actually an unnumbered region in that it's, I think it's the remnants of region 1349 and I think Noah just missed it. Yesterday we had a spectacular uh, prominence eruption off of the southeast limb. Here is a movie of it in the helium 2304 line showing it erupting over a period of three hours. Note the twisted field lines, but here's a question for you. Are those field lines twisting up or are they untwisting as the field lines erupt? Next we have a spectacular jet off the northwest limb. This probably will lead to a coronal mass ejection of some sort. However, do you see any twisting or untwisting of field lines in this particular event? I didn't. So does this mean that this is a completely different mechanism from the filament eruption that we just saw? To summarize current solar conditions, the sunspot number is at 140. The radio sun flux is at 140 solar flux units. The solar wind speed is at 330 kilometers per second. The GOES X-ray background is at B6 and falling. And the KP index is at 1, which is quiet. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, see some of the links in the description box below. If you like this and want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you wish to stay up to date on what's going on in the sun, please subscribe, you're welcome to do so. The answer to the riddle is Apollo 12. Apollo is the sun god, 12 is a dozen, where they landed was the ocean of storms, and the crew members, Conrad and Bean, became the third and fourth men to walk on the moon. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.